What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Big Vern, coming to you live from the App Stupid Studios. Act like you got some sense. Smash the like and subscribe button. We like it when you do that here. Also, if you see the socials at the bottom, make sure you follow us there for extra content behind the show. We like to go ahead and hear from everybody. And if you want to fund the madness directly, then you can hit us up at the cash app, dollar sign, Vern Dollars. Shout out to Dr. To the show. Thank you, good brother. We appreciate that. Got a busy Friday for you. A couple of different topics to cover. We got the Raiders. They hired Cliff Kingsbury as the new offensive coordinator. Then we're going to jump and talk some college basketball with uh, Juwan Howard and the Michigan Wolverines, uh, having arguably one of the worst seasons. And then we're going to talk some Indiana basketball, which the athletic poses a question about Mike Woodson and should he be on the hot seat? So sounds like it should be a pretty, pretty jam packed show. I know yesterday it was like we was recording, 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 and we still got some. I think we still got some stuff we haven't put up yet, but we will. We'll get to it. Be patient with us. Going to jump right into it. Going to talk some NFL when we come back from a quick 20. This is Big Vern at the App Stupid Studios. Yes, Taco Bell, Live Ma's, Live Ma's Taco Bell, try the $5 craving box or the cheesy burritos, the gorditas, the taco supremes, nacho supremes, Taco Bell, Live Ma's, visit the good people down at your local Taco Bell or download the app or order online, Taco Bell, Live Ma's. All right, so we're going to start with the NFL talking about the Raiders. And Antonio Pierce says, if that dude is putting t- together, it's a great coaching atmosphere there. We talked about Marvin Lewis being bought on as a senior advisor. They haven't really defined his role yet. I'm sure Davis and uh, Pierce will come to some sort of agreement. They're going to go ahead and move forward with that. But also keeping it in the coaching realm, you have uh, Cliff Kingsbury right now and the athletic, Mr. Tayshawn Reed and Vic Toffer, they lean heavily on Cliff Kingsbury being the new offensive coordinator. And his offense is very pass heavy. Now, dating back to his early days with Johnny Menzel at Texas A&M, He did rely on the running game some, but more calling plays for the Cardinals. He finished in top 10 in offensive yards in 2020 and 2021. And he was also top half of the league in points scored each of his first three seasons. So you can see that Pierce is coming out. Not only is he bringing a good architect on defense, he's also going to make the offense very pleasable for the pleasable pleasurable (laughs) he's going to make the offense very pleasurable for the people of vegas and is this a team they can get behind kingsbury 44 he had success with patrick mahomes at texas a&m and Kyler murray in the first couple of years with the cardinals and he would be a good pairing with mobile first round quarterbacks You know what? I think when I when I look back on it, and I, I guess I didn't pay a, enough attention to Patrick Mahomes in Texas A&M, and Texas A and M, and I was late to that party. But I think I'll go back and revisit that because they're saying that that guy, you know, he's been amplified, and if Kingsbury can get that kind of production out of a young quarterback coming into the league, 
and then he's got um avante out there oh my god <laughs> oh my god that's insane now kingsbury's coming back from some time off after he was fired last year in arizona and he was in usc as an advisory kind of an advisory role so there's no connection between him and caleb williams you know now kingsbury him joining pierce's staff with marvin lewis the raiders will be plugging into assistant head coaches type roles and with the former Bengals coach he'll continue on as an advisory role and i thought that this was a pretty telling article when it talked about antonio pierce when he was given the interim title he reached out to guys like a marvin lewis tom coughlin and then and he consulted with them about not only game preparation but how does this work how does that work when you have somebody like that who's determined to get better it can only work out for you in the long run so like i said it was a great hire for davis um, if he's able to stay up and out of football operations and just leave football to the football people i think that he has himself a great coach in pierce and I think Pierce is installing a system that is going to have to keep up in the AFC West now that Jim Harbaugh is in L.A. And then Patrick Mahomes is still alive and well in Kansas City. Nobody knows what Denver's going to look like. But, hey, that's the division. That's the division right there. And so Denver-Kansas City is a rivalry. <laughs> Kansas City-Denver no uh raiders vegas and denver rivalry so all of these rivalry games and then before the raiders moved to vegas the raiders and the Chargers used to be a rivalry game they call it hell week so you can quickly see that pierce doesn't just want to be okay he don't he doesn't want to be middle of the road you go out and get marvin lewis on defense to go ahead and shore that up and then you got him to consult with as you see these games and how to prepare for certain opponents then you have cliff kingsbury who's going to put points on the board so you can quickly see how this was becoming a team to be reckoned with and we'll talk about that when we come back from another unofficial sponsor of the show at a quick 20. this is big Vern at app stupid Yes, Roast the Host. Roast the Host is going down May the 10th. Make sure that you tune in. It is our inaugural show. I will be live and Roast the Host is just like it sounds. You get to roast me for two minutes. Uh, a couple of rules to the show is that you have to be a, you have to be actually subscribed to the show and you have to have a picture when we put the link out you select the link we verify the um, aforementioned and then you have two minutes to roast me you can go after the show you can go after production you can go after you can hurt my feelings i'm sure the staff will get a kick out of it i will too a couple of things my mom is fair game i'm fair game my dad is off limits my wife and kids are off limits everything that everything other than that Hey, have at it. <laughs> have at it. The winner, we will get your information and then we'll go ahead and send you a cash app so you can have a decent lunch. And uh, yeah, anywhere you have lunch these days, it's 30 bucks. <laughs> so I, I found that out when uh, I had bought lunch for a crew of five. So yeah, 30 a person. Not 30, that, that's it. 30 a person. So we can see my frustration level with that. Anyway, roast the host. Make sure you tune in May the 10th. That's on a Friday. Back to the Raiders. The Raiders have 13 picks in the 2024 draft. 
Now, the first round, they're 11th. They got elevated. They were 13th. They were 11th. They got elevated. And they got a single pick in rounds two, three, four, and five. The sixth round, they get that pick from Kansas City. And then they have three picks in the seventh round. The Raiders have 43 million in cap space. So they got, got some money. They got some money they can spend. Now they have to cut Hunter Renfro. He signed a two year extension for 32 million. He's not playing like it. Not playing like it at all. They have to cut Hunter because he signed that two year deal. And, you know, once you go ahead and you cut him because Jacoby Myers is pretty much taking his spot and made him non existent. And he's back actually a good second on the team. If they cut him, they save eight million in cap space, but that's going to trigger a five million dollar dead cap hit. Now, I think five million dollars in dead cap, Davis can live with that. Now, on the flip side, if you cut him before June the first, you save eleven million in salary room. So that being an added incentive to get rid of this dude Renfro as fast as you can. Also, you have defensive tackle. Jerry Tillery, another two-year extension guy, $6 million. Now, he, he doesn't have bad production numbers, but if Tillery stays, he carries a cap hit of $4 million. So if you keep Tillery and you let Renfro go, you kind of null and void the savings back and forth. So it's a business above anything. A guy like that on production, especially if the Raiders are looking to replace the front seven. He's just going to be a casualty of that. Now, if you cut him, you save three million in the cap space. And one thing that the, I think the one thing that leans in the favor that they will end up cutting Tillery is that Telesco is the new GM of the Raiders now. But when Tillery was with the Chargers, Telesco was the GM. And he cut him back in 2022. So the indication is that, hey, look, he's going to cut him again because he just doesn't have too a high thought of the number one first round draft pick. He just doesn't have a good idea that he's a fit for that team. So we don't know where it's going to go, but hopefully it's going to land in a good place. Raider fans, let me know what you think. Is Antonio Pierce putting together an awesome coaching staff built to take the Raiders to the next step, get them into the playoffs and possibly the AFC championship game? Or could this thing crater and bottom out and leave the silver and black attack looking again for another head coach in another year to two years these are all fair questions this is big vernon app stupid we'll be right back talk some michigan basketball 